As our scripture was read there in Psalms 42, as the deer pants for the spring brooks, for the water, so does my soul for you, O God. Does your soul pant for the Lord like a deer does for the water? Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you very much for your many blessings. And now I just ask that you open our minds and fill us with your Holy Spirit as we open your word. Please remove any evil spirit that is here and help us concentrate on your holy word. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Amen. Church here, good morning. A simple question that I'd like to share with you this morning, and that is, why are you here today? Why did you wake up and come here? Okay, I, I hear because it's Sabbath. Okay, for communion Sabbath. To praise God. Anybody else? Why, did, why are you here? Okay, how about a young person? Let me hear somebody 20 or younger. Why are you here? Now if you say, because my mom brought me, I understand. My mom needed a ride. Your mom needed a ride. Well, you're here. Well, praise the Lord. I want to let you know that, that Jesus asked us the same question. If you open your Bibles to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Why are we here? There are many reasons. And today in this communion service, communion service, this is, this is a simple message, church. A simple message, and I hope it is thought-provoking for the rest of your life. John chapter 1, verse 35. Open your Bible there to the book of John chapter 1, and verse 35. And here, the disciples of John are with John, and Jesus comes by, and it says in verse, in verse 30, 35, Again, the next day, John, this, 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 this is John the Baptist, stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus, as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed him. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to him, What do you seek? What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated teacher, Where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. Come and see. But notice the question of Jesus. He says, What do you seek? Because they began following him. And his question was, what are you looking for? Why are you following me? Why are you here today at church? Why are you here? Jesus asked, what do you seek? And I ask you, what, do you, what did you come to seek here? You see, one of the characteristics of modern man is boredom. One of the main characteristics of modern man is boredom. And people get easily bored today because they are being over-entertained. Over-entertained. Is that, is, is that not the case? We are constantly bombarded with entertainment. Whether it's social media, you know, with our, our, our phones, Facebooks, or Twitters, or Instagram, or Pinterest. Uh, whether it's performances somewhere, activities, a television, events, we are always being entertained in one way or another. And so it's easily for us to get bored when there isn't that entertainment happening. That, that next event to go to, that next birthday party to go to, or that next concert to go to. And sometimes, some people may come to the church just seeking for another high in their entertainment. You see, every day during the week, they are entertained. They're entertained. They're entertained. We are entertained in one way or another. And when it comes time to come to church, we seek for another 
just another high of entertainment again. Because we've had it all week long. And sometimes we look for big productions, big equipment, or colored lights here. Um, the music must have a certain rhythm. The preacher must preach a certain way to have me entertain. And, we, and my question to you is, is Christ, just Christ alone, sufficient for you? Is Christ alone just sufficient for you? Or do you need to add a lot of these trappings and sprinkles to make Christ entertaining for you? Or is Christ alone just sufficient for you? You see, when a, when a church is looking for a pastor, let's say that a church is looking for a, a pastor, it's time, it's time to, 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 um, to bring in a new pastor. The most common question that is, is asked is, can he preach? Can he preach? They don't ask, what does he preach? But can he preach? They don't ask, can he pray? Can he visit? No. Can he preach? They want, they want somebody that will continue to, to, to maybe entertain them or, or in some cases um, make them laugh. But do we come to church, friends, just for Christ? Just for Christ. Do you thirst there as, Prov as, as Psalms 42? Do you thirst for God as a deer pants for the water? Do we come thirsting for the Word of God no matter who is preaching? Or do we come searching just for a specific person? You may have noticed, but the, our, our bulletins used to say who's preaching next week. They used to give out that information. And I, I asked my lovely secretary to take that out, to stop putting that information there. Because you should not come to hear just me preach. You should hear come the Word of God no matter who is presenting the Word of God. The Word of God is powerful by itself, presented by whoever it is who has prepared themselves for it. But if you're coming just to hear a specific person, friends, just stay home. Just stay home. So I've taken that out of the bulletin. And sometimes people call the office and I happen to answer if Re Rebecca is busy and, and they ask me, are you preaching this Sabbath? I say, come and see. <laughs> come and see. It should not be about me, friends. It, it should never be about a specific pastor, whether myself or anyone else. But it should be, why are we coming here? What are you seeking? Jesus asked. What do you seek? And we've got to be careful that we are not thirsting for the wrong things. We need to be careful. We are not demanding the church to give us certain things that the church was never designed to supply. You see, this isn't an arena. This isn't a theater. This is a house of God. Jesus says, a house of prayer. This is my house of prayer. A place where hearts are transformed and God speaks to the heart. That is what this is. You see, Isaiah, if you, if you turn with me to the book of, of Isaiah, God, through the prophet Isaiah, had this similar situation where, where people were going to the sanctuary for the wrong reasons. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. If you join me there in verse 11. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11. Here people were coming to the sanctuary for the wrong reasons. And we see what, what the Lord has to say about that. And again, my same question is, what do you seek? Is Christ sufficient for you? Verse 11 says, To what purpose is a multitude of your sacrifice for me, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fats of fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or lambs or goats. Where, when you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courts? Bring no more what kind of sacrifices? Futile or vain sacrifices. You see, it wasn't the problem that the sacrifices were the issue. 
But they were bringing sacrifices with no remorse heart, with no true re repentance, and just going through the motions and just coming to church, or maybe coming to church to see how many sacrifices would be brought that day. Or to see who brought a sacrifice. Whoa, look how many he brought. I wonder how many sins he's got to confess. Here God says, bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moon, the Sabbath, and the calling of assembly. I cannot endure iniquity and the, and the sacred meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts. My soul hates. Notice that. It was God himself who appointed this feast. But here, here, he is unpleased because they're just going through the motion. They're going to the sanctuary for the wrong reasons. They are a trouble to me. I am weary to br of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. And what does verse 16 says? Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the, op the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widows. You see, you, you may come to church and enjoy the music, enjoy the preaching. But because you did not come for the right reason, God here is saying, it's vain. I'm sick of it. It's vain. Did you come for God or did you come for a show? Do you go to church for God or, you do, or do you go for a show? Christ Object Lessons, page 228, I want to share with you. And it should be the meditation in your bulletin, the meditation in the back. Here, Christ Object Lessons, page 222 says, The gospel invitation is to be given to all the world. To every nation and kindred and tongue and people. They're from Re Revelation 14, verse 6. The last message of warning and mercy is to be is to be lighted, is to delight, is to lighten the whole earth with its glory. It is to reach all classes of men, rich and poor, high and low. Go out into the highways and, and edges, Christ says, and compel them to come in that my house may be full. The world is perishing for want of what? Of the gospel, friends. The world is perishing for want of of the preaching of the Word of God. There is a famine for the Word of God. Now that's interesting. With so many churches, how can there be a famine for the Word of God? There's so many churches, so many denominations, and yet there is a famine, there is a hunger for the Word of God. There are Few who preach the word unmixed with human tradition. Though men have the Bible in their hands, they do not receive the blessings that God has placed in it for them. And that's powerful. That goes right along with Isaiah here, where God says, Stop just coming for the show. There are few. Though men have the Bible in their hands, they do not receive the blessing that God has placed in it for them. The Lord calls upon His servants to carry His message to the people. The, the word of everlasting life must be given to those who are perishing in their sins. So, the, word, the world is seeking for the pure, undiluted gospel of Jesus Christ, friends. So is the word sufficient? Even if the preacher may not be a recognized preacher or may not be such a good preacher or the music may not be your style of music, is, it, is the Word of God sufficient for you? Is Christ sufficient for you or do you need to decorate it with something? Friends, my, my prayer is that the Word be sufficient for you. Jeremiah, turn with me to Jeremiah 15.
Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. The Bible says, Your words were found, and I ate them, and your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. What was the joy and rejoicing? The word of God. The word of God. Just turn a couple of books before to Job. Job chapter 23. Here in Job 23, verse 12, he says, I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Do we treasure more the word of God than even our food here? Job is telling us. And I know that they, there are some that come to church only because we have a potluck. But church, we need to treasure the word of God Amen. more. The Bible does predict that there will come a time, a famine for the word of God. Amen. But you see, when Jesus calls us, when Jesus calls us to follow him, he calls us just exactly for that, to follow him, to follow him. There was, when the disciples were following Jesus, and he asked them, what do you seek? He invited them to follow him. If you go with me to Matthew, we're going to look quickly through all the Gospels that every invitation that Jesus makes is always an invitation only to him. Only to him. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Because when we come to church, we shouldn't be interested in being entertained. Or we even, even shouldn't be interested in coming for any other reasons, but only to follow Jesus. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. There the Bible says, Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, he says. Look at Mark chapter 1. We see the same thing in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 16. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Follow what? Me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. Look at Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Verses 1 through 11. There the disciples are fishing and Jesus says, Cast the net on the, other, uh, on the other side. And they said, Lord, we've been fishing for so long, all night long. But because you say so, we're going to do it. And they do it. And they catch so much fish that they're surprised. That even Peter says here in verse 8, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John and the sons of Zebedee who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for now, from now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. They forsook everything and followed Jesus. And look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 43. There, story of Philip and Nathaniel. John chapter 1, verse 43. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, What? Follow, Follow me. Follow me. As simple as that is, friends. As simple as that is. So many people do not understand. Because the church is full of all kinds of people. Is it not? You have your people who are serious all the time. And, your people, and you have people who are s silly and clowns all the time. You have you know, those who are quiet and timid. You have those who are not. You have some that hold their tongue. You have some that don't. 
You have all kinds of people in the church, but not one of them is worth following except Jesus Christ. Not even, not even your church pastor, your church elders, or the, or the conference president or general conference president. Nobody is worth following. Jesus says here, in every single one of his, of his invitations, follow me, follow me, follow me. So there is no one in church in which we should follow but Jesus Christ. Amen? amen? amen. Church, you say amen, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not buying it. Because too many of us allow people in the church to discourage us in the church. If you really mean your amen, that we are to follow Jesus, should we follow Jesus, only Jesus? Yes. Amen? If you really mean your amens, then explain to me why there are people who stay out of the church because of people. Because of people. How can you let another human being be the reason why you stop coming to church? Amen. You stop coming to prayer meeting? You do not participate in communion service? We are here to follow Jesus. He says, what do you seek? He asks the disciples, what are you looking for? Are you looking for entertainment? Then don't follow me. Are you looking to follow one of my disciples? Don't follow them. Follow me, Jesus says. Follow me. Our family, our family, when I say our family, I'm talking about the Charles family, went through a difficult time during my junior high and high school years. Very difficult time. And I praise the Lord and thank God that my mother did not leave the church. Because we had every right and every reason to write off the church and the members and the pastors. But my mom, in her God-given wisdom, always reminded us, we're going there to be with Jesus. Sometimes the meanest people you will find are in the church. Amen. Amen. They, be, they may be the most critical or cynical or sarcastic or mean. But here Jesus is inviting us, follow and look only at me, at Jesus Christ. Is Jesus sufficient for you? See, we are here to partake in this communion service. And if Jesus is sufficient for you, then no one will keep you away from his church, friends. If Jesus is sufficient for you, then no one will keep you away from his church. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our eyes on Jesus. You know, I am reminded just right now, it just came to my mind, Ellen, Ellen White's first vision where she saw the people of God going to the kingdom and many were looking in different places and were falling off, falling off the way. But those who kept their eyes on Jesus stayed in the narrow path. Amen. Stayed in the narrow path. We need to keep our eyes solely on Jesus Christ. So do you come into the church because of a deep conviction that you need to be changed? Friends, that is why we come to church. People say that the church is a hospital for sinners, and it is. You see, when you and I became members of this church, we announced to others that we have a problem, and that only Jesus Christ can help us. If we do not come for that, but we come for other reasons, then we're coming for the wrong reasons. And that is why we are really here. It's not, it's not because of your gifts, or your talents, or your money. God doesn't need any of that. We are here in the church because God wants to change our lives. He wants to change us. We come to seek God and His transforming power in our lives. But in order for that to happen, He has to be sufficient for us. He has to be sufficient for us. The only thing that comes, the only thing that comes similar in, 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 in comparing 
a relationship with Jesus and ourselves, I say would be marriage. If you want to change, get married. Get married. Because marriage requires submission. Does it not? If you want to have a successful marriage, a successful marriage, you have to submit. You have to. If you stick it, you know, if, if you stick to your guns and say it's my way or the highway, I don't give your marriage too many years. We have to submit. Am I telling the truth, church? Yeah. Marriage is the only relationship that the Bible compares to being with Christ. And self has to give way. Self has to give way. My wife and I have been married for 12 years and it's amazing how we both have changed. How we, we both have changed. As long as you are trying to preserve self, you cannot submit. And the essence of being a Christian is submission. Submission to God. Submission to Christ. Whenever I'm having a Bible study and somebody brings up issues that they're uncomfortable that, that the they church may stand on a certain principle. I say, well, you don't have an issue with the church. You have an issue with God. You have, to, you have to first fall in love and have that relationship with Jesus. Because you see, once you fall in love with Jesus, anything He asks for you, you will freely do it. Won't you? I mean, we do that with, with our spouses. We love our spouses so much that sometimes the things that they may ask, we're like, oh, I don't like to give you a massage, but I love you so much that if that makes you happy, I'll give you a massage. If that food makes you happy, even though I am burning my mouth, I will eat it with you. <laughs> and it brings us joy that they're happy. Does it not? Because there's that relationship because my spouse is sufficient for me. Is Christ sufficient for you? Is Christ sufficient for you? Friends, I want to close there going back to our story in John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse 39. There, before we dismiss to our service of humility in the participation of foot washing. John chapter 1, verse 39. There, he says, what do you seek? And then he said to them, come and see. Come and see. You see, Jesus had no house and he wanted them to, he wanted them to see. If you're going to follow me, I don't promise you no earthly kingdom, no earthly palace. Jesus had no money. He had one set of clothes. So he wanted to make sure that they were going to follow him for him. And Jesus wants to make sure that you are seeking him for him. Now, are there many things that Jesus gives us? Absolutely. But those are a result a result of a relationship with him. A quick example that I can think of was, was when my wife and I first got married, I owned a 1989 or 88 Honda Prelude. And I did not own it when it was barely new. It already had over who knows how many hundred thousand miles. It was rusted. I used to take it to the beach every weekend on the edges. It was rusted, so when it rained, I can guarantee if you sat on the passenger, your knee would get wet. And the air conditioning was completely out. And so you had to roll down your windows. And so whenever I would go to pick up my, well, my, my wife now, but whenever I went to go pick up Salit and we would go out for dinner or just go out uh, and, and be together, I would, you know, she would sit there and I would have a towel. If it was cloudy, I said, if it rains, just put this over your knee and you'll be fine. <laughs> and if it doesn't, we need to make sure that we keep going because if the car idled for a long time, the knee would get hot. 
and then I had to, you know, turn it off and let, wait for it to cool. And she used to live in Matamoros, which was right across the border of Bronzeville, Texas. And those who have been to Matamoros coming back to the United States, you are guaranteed to be in line for a while. For a while. And so that's when, you know, that's when it's, it's a good thing to have a standard car. Because you can always start it if it turns off with, with a push. Or you can, or you can idle it down the, the bridge. When we got married, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, she did not marry and say yes because she was going to inherit that nice car. <laughs> no. She married the man. And she got the car because the car came with the man. <laughs> but church, let me tell you something. We marry and fall in love with Jesus. And all the gifts that he gives us, everlasting life, forgiveness, are just part of his gifts. But we are not in it for the gifts for heaven. We are in it for the man. Because Christ is sufficient for me. Is Christ sufficient for you? Jesus has no house and does not promise riches and money and many things here. So he wants to make sure that if you follow him, it's for him. And as we partake of this table today, I want to plead with you that Jesus be sufficient for you. And every time you come to church, whether this church or any church, you're going there for the right reasons, not to be entertained, not to look at others, but you're only going there because you're going for Jesus. You're going for Jesus. All, this, all these things we accumulate today, in the end, are going to burn up. They're all going to be gone. The only thing we will have is our relationship with Christ. That's the only thing. And during the time of trouble, during the time of trouble, the only thing that you will have is your relationship with Jesus. If you're used to all these trappings and bands and lights and shows, when you're in jail, when you're in a cave, you ain't going to have none of that. So why are you here? I plead, I plead with you that you're here for Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, you're coming very soon. And Father, I ask that if you need to check our hearts, that you check our hearts. That we are, are coming here only for you and for no one else. That you may be sufficient for us. Thank you, O Lord God. And be with us the rest of this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.